Hello everyone, Ecotech here to give you an update on the watering aspect of my automated microgreen project. Um, the first thing you'll notice is the tent. The tent had to do actually with the automated watering aspect of this project because since I'm dealing with a custom solution with tubes running everywhere, uh, flooding these tables, there, there's water basically and being in an apartment I didn't want water to damage this apartment so the tent will serve as a uh, redundancy safety so that if there is a leak, it catches it on the walls and it accumulates at the bottom and I'll be able to not have damage. So if we go back to the automating aspect of it, just like last time, or actually last time, I don't remember if we had one or two tubes, I believe we only had one. I reverted back to two following the comments and following my uh, a lot of trial and error. Uh, so there's a drain tube and there's a flood tube. So if we look at the flood, it comes here to a solenoid valve and this tube goes here at the bottom. So um, basically water gets pumped through this, comes here, the valve opens select so that we can select between either this level or that level and then it floods this whole tray. So it's the flood and drain method. Uh, it is controlled again by this box, so in here I have more power supplies and the relays and under there the pump, you can see the pump, I've put foam just just for sound. So if we go in there, you'll see the pump is right there. And this is the water tank, so it's a small water tank, again if there's a leak, uh, basically I don't want a huge volume of water during this uh, testing period. Notice that the water was red. That has to do with the nutrients that I'm using. The uh, General Hydroponics Flora Solution. Uh, they're a good good test so far. I, I like them, I would recommend them. And actually if um, most of what you see here, I've made a, a Google Sheet that'll be down, down in the comments. Uh, actually no, down in the description. And you can check them and buy them if you want. Um, note that so far I've put the Canadian links, I'll work on uh, getting the Amazon.com links later. So if I give you a small, again, this is controlled by the Google Calendar, and if I give you a small uh, demo, I can basically put a flood uh, event. So let's put one right now. You can see that I actually have some program for later. So here there was one flood on Sunday, shelf number three. But in this case, I've flooded shelf number, is it two? Yes, so shelf number two. Uh, you can see that the water is coming through this pipe, flooding here. And you might be wondering, what is this blue thing? And why is this one different than this? Well, this is basically a diffuser so that the water doesn't just spray out. It gently drops and drops in the tray. And the, this is the latest version. Under here, that's the old version. So initially, um, the plan, well, actually, the requirement behind this design, let me, let me turn it off real quick for the, for the sound. So I went through multiple iterations on this. I'd love your feedback on what you think and if you have other ideas, but the premise of these designs was that I loved being able to just pull these trays out, clean them and put them back in. And a lot of the systems I've seen, they they attach the drain and they attach the flood to the um, to this and basically it makes it really annoying to remove and and clean on. So if we look at the let's look at the flood first, what I am designed is a small bracket so actually, if we look at this parts bin, I came through a bunch of iterations of designing a bracket. This one was one of the first, well, it's still broken, but one of the first good ones. This bracket holds the solenoid valve and has basically small legs so that it can attach to either the lip of this or it can attach to this lip and hold it. And the reason being is that now, if I want to remove this to clean it, I can just pull this up and put it on the side here and attach it. And there, you can see it holds. And now 
Uh, so that figures out the flood. And if we look at the drain, what can be done is you go under, you follow this tube. It's not the most convenient thing, but behind there is a valve. I can shut this off to avoid the water. Um, if more water were to come from above, I wouldn't spew out this tube. But if I, if I shut this off, I can then remove this tube and just remove this shelf and clean it. And then when I come back, I'd have to plug this tube again and just bring this back and over. So it's a fairly simple design. Um, however, on the drain side, I'm really not happy with just having basically it's a hole and I get to pull on this and it gets removed. And if I want to, I have to fiddle with it to put it back. And it's, it's I think this needs some improvement. So please, if you have ideas, um, put them down in the comments. I'd love to, to get your thoughts. I've played with several other ideas and so far, well, nothing really good came out of, of my brain. So I'll keep thinking about it. Um, what else? So this diffuser, again, I'll, I can just pull it out. It's just a part, a 3D printed part where the water comes in this first chamber. Then if we look from the sides, you get to see on here, maybe if it focuses, there's basically a hole on each side. There's four holes. You can barely see them there and it hits the walls and it basically makes that this stream comes out gently. So if I turn it on right now, it's, so if I just drag this back, it will um, start working and it's spewing everywhere and splashing a bit. So I just wanted to control this by having this piece. So I'll turn it off. So there we have it for the, how the system works. Now, as you can see, I can control if it's this shelf. I can, I have a per shelf control and I basically set a schedule and have these flooded. Um, it takes two minutes to flood and then it drains in r about five minutes. So I do that three times a day for now. Seems that it's working fairly well for these microgreens. The, the roots are under and they sip the water through these holes. So this is, this is some pak choy and I think this is, yeah, broccoli. They're not the most healthy, but for this test, they endured some failures. So that's why it could have been better, but overall I'm pretty pleased. Um, yeah, I think that covers the automated, why is this not turning off? Oh, confirm. Okay, now it should, now it should turn off. And you can see that if you wait a bit, the water just slowly builds up and uh, floods everything and then it'll drain through that again also if you have recommendations for a filter i've played with this but clearly it's temporary i need a pr more permanent solution and yeah in the next video i'll discuss more of the lighting so if you look under you see that i have two typical light shop lights and then now i'm running some custom leds um, there's more LED projects to come, uh, more controllers. Uh, I might dive into the, the Google Calendar and the Google Sheet scheduling or talk more about LEDs if it focuses. Uh, yeah, I had it there. Yeah, there we go. That's another LED. A book that I've been reading and highly recommend is Light Management in Control Environment by uh, Robert Lopez and Eric Runkel. Sorry if I missed their names, but basically now that the system is at a point where the environment is very controllable, I will be able to experiment with different lights, look at how the intensity, the spectrum and everything has an effect on the plant and uh, share that information as well as implement it in a custom design. So. Let me know what you think of this system. I love to hear if your ideas, if you have suggestions for improvements and let me know what you want to see next, more on the software controlled side of it. So sort of the back end of this, do you want to see 
some of the electrical um, work of putting it onto a PCB instead of having all those wires? Or do you want to hear more about the effects of light or the, the light that I'm currently working on? Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.